This video is about the different types of elasticity that we have. So the first type of elasticity is price elasticity of demand, which means the percent change in quantity demand divided by percent change in price. Remember that we have a negative relationship between price and the quantity demand, which means if price goes up, quantity demand will go down based on the law of demand. Therefore, every time we calculate price elasticity of demand, our answer must be negative. Therefore, once we get a negative sign, we're going to use absolute value because this negative sign, it means a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. So what will be our benchmark here? Our benchmark is one. If price elasticity of demand is equal to one, it's unit elastic. Bigger than one, it's elastic. Lower than one, it's inelastic. The second type of elasticity is price elasticity of supply. So we will use exactly the same formula, but instead of quantity demanded, we'll use quantity supplied. So our formula will be percent change in quantity supplied divided by percent change in price. Remember that we have a positive relationship between price and the quantity supplied, which means they move in the same direction. If price goes up, quantity supply will go up. Therefore, every time we calculate price elasticity of supply, it will always be positive. Therefore, what will be our benchmark? It will be exactly the same as price elasticity of demand, which means our benchmark is one. If price elasticity of supply is equal to one, it's unit elastic. Bigger than one, it's elastic. Lower than one, it is inelastic. Then, do you remember the factors that shift the demand curve? One of them was income. Therefore, our third type of elasticity will be income elasticity. So instead of dividing by percent change of price, we will divide by percent change in income. Therefore, our formula for income elasticity will be percent change in quantity demanded divided by percent change in income. So do you remember that if income goes up and we have a normal good, it means that the demand will be higher. Therefore, we have a positive relationship between higher income and higher demand for a normal good. But what if we increase income and this good is inferior good? Therefore, the demand for inferior good will go down. We have a negative relationship. Therefore, what will be our benchmark for income elasticity? it will be zero, which means if it's zero, it's called sticky. What do you mean by sticky? This is a type of product that if we change income, we don't change our demand. We consume the same amount. Therefore, if we increase income and then we decrease demand, it means that we have a negative relationship. It means that our income necessity will be negative. It means that this product is inferior. What if we increase income, our demand increases. It means that we have a positive relationship. So income necessity will be positive. It means it's a normal good. Therefore, our benchmark here will be zero. I'm not going to use any absolute value. I will keep the negative sign in case of income elasticity. Therefore, we can have a further analysis, which means for any normal good, it could be either a necessity or a luxurious. Therefore, I will have another benchmark, which is one, which means if the income elasticity between zero and one, it's a necessity. If it's bigger than one, it's luxurious. Therefore, if you got income elasticity equal to 0.6, so this means that it's a normal good because it's bigger than zero. And since it's bigger than zero and lower than one, so it will be necessity as well. So it will be normal necessity. What if you got income elasticity equal to two? So it says that two is bigger than zero, therefore it's a normal good. At the same time, two is bigger than one, therefore it will be luxurious as well. Another factor that shifts demand and supply curve is price of related goods. And we differentiate it between substitutes and complements. Therefore, our next type of elasticity will be cross price elasticity. Why do we call it cross price elasticity? Because we have two goods. We have the price of one good and the quantity demand of another good. And that's why, he, why we write it here as EXY. XY means that we have two goods. Therefore, it will be the same as the price elasticity of demand. But the only difference is I will get the percent change in quantity demand of good X divided by percent change of the price of another good, which is good Y. For price elasticity of demand, I use the same price and the quantity demand of the same good. But for cross price elasticity, I use the quantity demand of one good and the price of another good. Therefore, do you remember that if the price of good X goes up, and the demand of another good, which is good Y, goes up, it means that we have a positive relationship. This is considered substitute goods. If the price of good X go up, but the demand of good Y goes down, 
It means that we have a negative relationship. This means that we have complements. These two goods are complements. Therefore, our benchmark here will be zero. Anytime you get cross price elasticity equal to negative, you keep the negative. You don't use absolute value. So what do we mean by zero? It means independent. It means that if we change the price of one good, it will not affect the demand or the quantity demand of another good. Consequently, it means that these two goods are independent. They don't affect each other. What if it's negative? If it's negative, it means that they are complements because we have the negative relationship between the price of one good and the demand of another good. What if it's positive? If it's positive, it means that these two goods are substitutes.